Oh, hell yeah. Hello, cheese friends. Welcome to charcuterie class. Today, we're gonna make a cheese and snack board for your Thanksgiving, for your party, for your table. We're gonna use some store-bought elements. We're gonna make some of our own elements to really level up this board. Hang with me, let's do it. I have all of my cheeses out already. I wanna bring these to room temperature before I put them on the board. Having your cheese at room temperature is gonna make it the most delicious it can be. The flavors are gonna be warm and bright. You're gonna get rid of that cool fridge temperature. So we're gonna start by laying these out and we're gonna make our elements while these come up to temp. Today I have five cheeses. For a board this size, I have some pretty big wedges. We are going to go for a variety of flavors, textures, and types of milk today. So in my cheese cellar, which is a silicone box where I store my leftover cheese, I have a sheep milk Asiago. This is a goat cheese. It's a little bit different than your goat on a log. Whenever you're building a cheese board, Look for a more interesting version of what you might already just naturally be drawn to. For a cheddar, you can find an H cheddar, you can find something that's been cloth bound or cured. If you don't have these options at your grocery store, try a butcher shop or a cheese shop if you have one in your town. You'd be surprised if you get out of your comfort zone, you might be able to find something new and special. This is a very funky blue cheese. This is a cow's milk cheese. We have a really soft, funky, bloomy rind cow's cheese. We're gonna use this in place of something more common like brie. And this is a Fontina, which is kind of funky, a little soft. It's a nice stand-in for something like a cheddar, uh, but it gives you the funk that you might get from a brie. This blue part is just from the label, don't mind it. They're all a little funky. This is our ground zero anchor point of our board. I'm gonna set this aside to warm up to room temperature while we make our other elements, starting with a truffle honey. This is one cup of honey and this is truffle zest. You can get this at almost any grocery store now. You can get it online. It's a much cheaper and more available ingredient than a fresh summer truffle. What this is gonna do is add a honey sweet note to our cheeses without just being a flat honey flavor, it's gonna give it this extra surprise flavor. To do this, we just have this little honeycomb and we're just gonna stir this in and let it bloom. So I'm gonna do this first so that the truffle has time to really emulsify and get all warmed up in this honey while we get our other elements all settled up. And we're just gonna set this over here for now. Our next element is a marinated feta. You can find these pre-marinated in the store. It is really fun and easy to marinate by yourself. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. First up, big old chunk of feta. And you can just crumble this into small-ish pieces straight with your hands. You're going for snacking size. Additionally, you can make so much more for about the same price as you can get it at the store. This is about a pound of feta. I'm gonna use three or four bay leaves, some red pepper flakes, whole black pepper. I don't want to grate in the pepper because I don't want it to give uh, mealy bits to my feta. I just want to infuse that peppercorn flavor. This is preserved lemon puree. It has a really tart, tangy, and fermented quality to it. And it adds that, hmm, what is that element to this marinated feta? I'm gonna put in just a few whole sprigs of thyme, and I'm gonna cover this with a ton of olive oil. It's really gonna marinate in the olive oil. Our feta is already salty, so we're not gonna salt that. Taste yours when it's done marinating. If you want some salt, go ahead and add some flaky salt when you serve it. Give this a toss. And you can set it this aside and just let it continue to marinate for 10, 15, 20 minutes all the way until days or maybe even a week in your fridge. Ta-da! This is sort of the look that I'm going for. Everything's fully coated. I'm gonna set this aside. I'm gonna stir it every couple of minutes for the next 10, 15 minutes. Let this also warm up and soak up all those flavors. And we're gonna serve just a smidgen of this on our board later. Next up, we're gonna make a basil infused olive oil that we're gonna drizzle all over our board and on our crostinis. I'm gonna take a minute to set that up. Hang tight. While we were gone, we set up our basil oil. So here I have a blender, a cup of oil, and basil that's been blanched. To blanch the basil, I just put it in a pot of salted boiling water for about 20 seconds, 
pulled it out and put it in this ice bath. When you put your blanched basil in an ice bath, it's gonna keep it green. When we blend this with the oil, the, the oil is gonna be bright green. It's gonna be really beautiful. We're gonna drizzle it over some crostinis on our cheese board. You might be tempted to skip an ice bath. I always am. It is a little bit of extra work. If you do that, your basil oil is going to be brown. You're not gonna have that vibrant green color. The flavor will be the same. This is an aesthetic choice. If you really don't wanna do it, don't do it. But if you wanna have that stunning presentational element, invest the time, invest the ice. To get started on this, we're going to just get this out of the ice bath. I'm gonna dry this off on a clean, dry kitchen towel. And I don't wanna squish any of the oil out, so I'm just gonna lay this flat and we're just gonna pat dry. I have two cups of basil here to one cup oil. You can use the same ratio to make more or less. Gentle pat, pat, pat. We do wanna get as much water out of this as possible, but don't wring it out. That's gonna, uh, you're gonna lose some of your oils that way. And into the blender we go. You can do this with any soft herb. For heartier herbs, you might just wanna stick with roasting them in oil and using them as garnish. Oil in. As always, a little bit of salt, and we blend. We're gonna blend on high until this is fully combined, maybe 30 seconds-ish. <laughs> Looks good. We are going to strain this. Here I have a a uh, vessel to strain into, a little bit strainer, and some cheesecloth. Cheesecloth is gonna catch any bits that have been left behind, leaving us with a perfectly clean oil. Give it a little shimmy. It'll come through slowly. It's kind of like making coffee. I would keep this for a few days. You can use this in cocktails, serve it over pasta with cheese. If you decide to keep it in your fridge, you can. It will solidify, so you just wanna bring it back up to room temperature before you serve it with anything. There are a lot of heavy flavors on a cheese board. There's a lot of fat. This is gonna be really bright. It's gonna help break up some of this fatty, funky flavor. This could keep going, but we don't have all day. So, we're gonna transfer this into our little cruet drizzler. And this is where this will stay until we are ready to finish our cheese board. It's a science experiment. Ta-da! All right. We have made our truffle honey, our basil oil, our marinated feta. Let's get assembling. Our feta is marinated. You can see it's broken down a little bit. Everything is really in all those nooks and crannies. We're just gonna put a little bit of this in a serving bowl. I like to keep the bay leaf in here for presentation. It's delicious. Save the rest for later. I made some crostinis, which is a great way to use your leftover bread. This is just a stale baguette that's been cut on a fancy sideways slice. It's been toasted in the oven with some olive oil. It's gonna make your own cracker, essentially. Great way to use leftover bread. Cheaper than buying a whole bag of fancy crackers. And it gives you a nice big surface area for this cheese board. Don't feel like you have to put everything in one place. This is a big board. People will be coming from all angles. Give the people options. Make sure you add height, texture to your board. We could stop here. This is a lot of cheese. It's already got a lot of nice elements. I'm gonna fill out some of this space. This is a big board with some extra elements I have around the house, like some sweet and spicy nuts, some gherkins, which are tiny French pickles, which are served traditionally with mustard, some fig jam. Any jam will work that you have around. You always want something fresh on your board. Throw some grapes on there. These were in season. Use whatever is seasonal. Throw a whole clementine on there. Throw a peach in the summer. Color, texture, a bite of something that's not dairy. We have some of our elements on here. I'm gonna add a prosciutto, cured salted ham. I like to sort of fold these up into a little prosciutto rose. Put it in some of the crevices. Putting everything really crowded is one gonna photograph really nicely, but it's gonna make it look really abundant. This is not our final draft. We can still move stuff around. And not everything needs to stay with its friends. You can put one piece here, one piece there, spread it around. That's what's gonna give this dimension and visual interest. I have some hard chorizo coming in. This chorizo is smoky and salty. It brings a little bit of spice to this, which is 
not currently present on this board. It's also bringing a new texture. It's hard and chewy, where most things here are a little bit soft. This is getting crowded. We have a couple more things coming in, so I'm gonna do a little bit of rearranging. These are our whole roasted tomatoes with garlic confit. If you wanna check out how to make these, I'll leave you a link below. Anything that you don't wanna mix, give it its own utensil. Little spoon, little fork. Here's the thing about cheese boards. People are going to be nervous to dig in. They're gonna feel like they don't wanna ruin all your beautiful work. The best thing that you can do for them is go ahead and carve out some chunks, shave off some pieces, get the party motion started. It's a good way to invite people to come in and eat, but it's also a good way to create some motion on this board. So let's do that. Cut off a couple of pieces, get the party motion started. You don't have to be too precious about it. Get in and just crumble into chunks. This is our almost finished cheese board. I know you're probably thinking that looks very expensive. Building a cheese board can be very expensive. So here are some tips for getting the most bang out of your buck. One, don't skimp on domestic cheeses. There are some really good domestic cheeses out there. You do not have to go to a cheesemonger or a cheese counter and get the most expensive, fanciest European thing you can find. Ask for something local if you're in a place that makes their own cheese. Always go to a cheese counter and ask if there's something on sale. Cheese is a perishable good. Sometimes they buy too much. It's a good place to start. Try an Italian grocery. Italian groceries often have fresh cheeses like ricotta or mozzarella that they've made in-house. Adding your own little homemade elements to this is gonna level it up without breaking the bank. Making these yourself is gonna cost you a couple of bucks. Making your own marinated feta, super easy way to level up a pretty affordable cheese. Don't forget jams, honeys, Mustards, shelf stable stuff, great ways to fill out your board. Grab some seasonal fruit, you're really good to go. We did not forget about the basil oil. I'm gonna drizzle this over this little zone of Cristini's. It's electric green, I love it. You can put it on your feta, you can put it on a bite of your choosing. I am a soft, stinky cheese lover. I am not myself a soft or stinky cheese. I'm gonna add some of my tomato oil and roasted tomato from earlier, and maybe even a little half chorizo. This is great. I love our tomatoes. They've been marinating in this oil for so long, they're so good. All right, I got a lot of Christine's to eat. Let's make some more. There are so many flavor combinations possible on this board. Let's go for some of our marinated feta, making sure we get some of that oil from the bottom. Spread that on a little bit of our truffle honey. Maybe a small piece of prosciutto on this. So good. You want a bite? Ooh, what should our final bite be? Between salty, rich cheese bites, feel free to have a little palate cleanser, dip a gherkin in some mustard. All right, let's make one more. I'm gonna go fig, goat, Big goat, maybe a little bit of extra basil oil. Classic, classic combo. Oh, hell yeah. We've made what I think is a perfect cheese board. It's got all the elements that I like on my board. If you wanna bring this to a party, everyone will be standing in one place and one place only, and that is next to the cheese board, where you should be. Thank you for coming to cheese board class. Show me what you do. If you love cheese boards, if you love stinky cheese, if you love truffle honey, hit the like, subscribe button. We'll see what you come up with. Talk to you soon.